A more powerful kind of definitions that we will make lots of is function definitions. Let's start with the formula in the middle of the screen. This is a formula that you've seen before. It generates the picture at the bottom of the screen, a picture of a cat saying hello. Now, if you like cats as much as I do, then you don't just want a picture of a cat saying hello, you want a picture of a cat saying all sorts of things. Um, you want, want a picture of a cat saying uh, bye, and if you want that picture, uh, you have to almost repeat the same formula, except where the formula says hello, you want the formula to say bye, like that. Everything else is the same. And then when we run this program, now we get two images, not just the hello image, but also the same cat saying bye. This is a kind of a long formula, and the formulas actually get a lot longer in our programs. So it is really inconvenient that we would have to um, repeat the same formula almost, except for this one little difference, just to get a cat saying something else. Okay, so wouldn't it be nice if we could have a new operation that uh, we design so that if I want a cat saying hello, I just type left paren, um, let's say the operation is called cat says, and I just say cat says hello. And I should be able to get this kind of image. And if I say cat says bye, or cat says meh, or whatever, I should be able to get any kind of uh, image with the cat saying different kind of things. Okay, so in this class, we're gonna be defining a lot of these operations. They're called functions. So here's how you define a function. We start with a left paren and then the word define because we're defining something, but we're not defining a constant or a variable, we're defining a function. So the next bit is a bit different. We put another left parenthesis, and now we need the name of the function we're defining, like cat says will be a good name for the function we're defining right now. But we're not done. We have to also give a name to the input to this function. The input like hello or bye or whatever message we want the cat to say. So one good name for this input will be message. And then we put the right parenthesis to mean that we're done with the input names. And then we need to put down what to actually do to generate the image. This is called the body of the function, the formula for computing the result of the function whenever someone uses the new operation cat says that we're defining. So that could be put like any other formula it's going to be very similar to the formulas that we already have for generating the pictures we already generated. So it could use a place image operation, it could use a text operation, except for the string that's passed to text, we want to use the input message. So that depending on what the input message is, we're going to get a different piece of text image, and then that image for the text is going to be placed onto the cat image. Okay, the rest of the formula is very similar to what we already have. And now the body is done, and to close the entire function definition, we just need one more right parenthesis. Now this is a function definition, but it would be clearer if we also describe the kind of input the function takes and the kind of output the function produces in the form of a signature. It's nice to put it down as a comment in the program to say that cat says is a function that takes as input a string and returns an image. This signature for our new function looks just like the signatures we've already given for previous functions, but this one's new. Now we can use the new function. So instead of this long formula for generating the picture of a cat saying hello, we could just use cat says and give it the string hello as input. And similarly for by and all sorts of other things. And now we can concisely generate a whole bunch of 
slightly different images.